In this movie, Kale's life changed after a tragic car accident in which his father died because he punches his teacher, which leads him to house arrest. As he adjusts to his restricted life, Kale becomes obsessed with his new neighbor, Robert, suspecting him of dark secrets. What is the truth behind the facade of Robert? The movie started with Kale fishing with his dad, Daniel. On the way home, a car cut them off and they crashed into a broken down car, rolling over. While checking on each other, a truck hit Daniel's side. Despite Kale's efforts to help, Daniel didn't survive. The scene moves to one year later. Kale was asleep in Spanish class when his teacher woke him up and asked him to give his final speech in Spanish. Kale had trouble and couldn't find the right words. His teacher got annoyed and said his father would be disappointed. Upset, Kale punched the teacher in the face. The juvenile court was understanding and gave him three months of house arrest instead of sending him to jail. The following day, Detective Parker came to Kale's house and fitted him with an ankle monitor, explaining that it would alert the authorities if he stayed outside his set area for more than 10 seconds. Once she left, Kale realized that Officer Gutierrez was his teacher's cousin and might be biased against him. Despite this, Kale wasn't too concerned about his punishment because he spent his time playing games or watching TV. One day, his mom came in and informed him she had canceled all his online subscriptions and even unplugged the TV to make him more productive around the house. After she left for work, did the chores but very lazily. He took a nap after his chores, but was soon disturbed by the noise of his new neighbors moving in next door. They also had a daughter named Ashley, who was of the same age as Kale. Suddenly, his doorbell rang. The neighbor's kids had pulled a prank on him. He started chasing them, but one of them reminded him he was under house arrest. He rushed back home, just managing to get there in time. It wasn't a good way to meet the new neighbors. Fortunately, Kale was let off for this time without any trouble. Not wanting to take any more chances, he set up some strings as boundaries to ensure he wouldn't step out too far. While doing so, he noticed the new girl arriving home. So he quickly headed to his dad's old office and watched her through the window with his binoculars. He heard another knock and went to open the door. It was his friend Ronnie. Kale showed Ronnie around the neighborhood with his binoculars, the new neighbor lady who was in the pool catching their attention. Later, Kale was on the porch with nothing much to do until the neighbor girl drove up again. He hurried to the mailbox, acting like he had trouble getting the mail to catch her attention. It worked, and she came over to help, introducing herself as Ashley for the first time. Later that evening, as Kale was watching the news, he heard about an unsolved missing person case involving a suspect with a 1960s Ford Mustang that had a dent on the left side. Just then, his phone alarm went off, reminding him it was time to watch Ashley do her nightly stretching routine. After her dad came in and got upset with her for reasons unknown, Kale shifted his focus to his other neighbor, Robert, who seemed suspicious because of his 1960s Mustang with a dent on the left side. This made Kale uneasy. The next morning, he read the newspaper for more details on the missing woman case and decided to investigate with Ronnie. They discovered that the details of the missing woman's case were similar to several kidnapping and murder cases in Austin from three years ago. Although the police never caught the culprit, they did find seven bodies in the house where the killer had stayed, but no sign of him. They quickly lost interest when they saw Ashley go swimming, but she noticed them staring. They felt embarrassed and hid when they heard the doorbell ring. Nervous and flustered, they eventually answered the door to find Ashley standing there. Ashley invited herself in, and Kale didn't mind at all. She headed straight for his messy room, which Kale and Ronnie hurried to clean up. When she discovered the binoculars he had been using to watch everyone, they quickly changed the subject and told her about their suspicious neighbor, Robert. They suggested he might be a murderer and mentioned the Mustang. Moments later, Robert drove out of the garage in his spotless, undented Mustang, leaving Kale confused. While Kale was acting strange and smelling Ashley's hair, she pointed out a longhorn skull hanging in Robert's garage. Kale quickly linked this to similar murders in Texas, where the longhorn symbol was involved. Ashley got interested and decided to help him look into it. After a few hours, Ronnie fell asleep from eating too much pizza, giving Kale and Ashley some alone time. She decorated his ankle bracelet with hearts, and they began to flirt. When Robert came home with a woman, Kale and Ashley watched them from a distance as they had wine and danced. They got nervous when they saw Robert holding a knife and approaching the woman, but they were relieved to find out he was just cutting a tag off her dress. As Kale and Ashley were about to kiss, Ronnie interrupted them. They were about to kiss again when her mom called, insisting she come home. Kale walked her back and tried to kiss her one last time, but she left without it. 
Back home, Kale saw the prankster kids watching something on YouTube. His focus shifted to Robert's house when he saw a woman running around trying to escape. He accidentally took a photo with a flash, which caught Robert's attention. Kale called Ronnie to update him, but stopped when he saw the woman calmly leaving the house and getting into her car. The next morning, Kale woke up and went downstairs for breakfast. He was surprised to find Robert in his house. He soon learned that his mom had invited Robert over because he had helped fix a flat tire. The conversation between them was tense. Kale then went upstairs where Ashley was waiting. He told her what happened, but she reassured him he was overthinking things. Ashley then mentioned she was having a party that night and needed to get ready. This made Kale a bit jealous. Later, he saw her at the party and noticed a guy hugging her, which upset him. To get her attention, he played a song really loud. Ashley got embarrassed and angry as everyone laughed at the party. She crawled through a window and took his iPod, threatening to leave if he didn't stop. They were both upset, but ended up having a conversation. Ashley wasn't sure if he was creepy or sweet, but she decided he was sweet. They ended up sharing a kiss. They planned to get close, but Ashley spotted Robert moving some suspicious bags into his garage. The next morning, they decided to investigate. Ashley went to spy on Robert at the hardware store, while Ronnie worked on getting the garage code. Ashley lost track of Robert and was about to leave when he stopped her. At first, he seemed friendly, but then took her keys and got into the car to have a serious talk. He said he knew she and her friends were watching him and asked her to stop as he liked his privacy. After giving her back the keys, he left. Ashley then told Kale and Ronnie what happened. Ashley insisted that Robert was right and that they had officially gone too far. She pleaded with them to stop investigating and spying on him, then left and went home for her parents' anniversary. Later that night, Kale set up a device that allowed them to view what his camera recorded on his TV at home. Ronnie suddenly came banging on his door, telling him he had left his phone in Robert's car. Panicking, Kale sent him over there with the camera, and he headed in through the garage. Ronnie informed him of a terrible smell and a bag with blood coming out of it. While he was investigating, the garage door suddenly closed and Ronnie panicked and ran for his life, causing the camera feed to go static. Kale, not caring about his ankle bracelet, headed over there with a baseball bat. As soon as he stepped foot in the front door, the police arrived and handcuffed him. Robert came out and cowled to tell the police about the situation. They found him convincing and checked Robert's house and found that the bloody bag was actually a dead deer Robert had hit a few nights earlier. The police informed his mom that Kale would have to appear in court the next morning due to his actions. She was quite disappointed and angry, but tried to help him by apologizing to Robert, hoping he wouldn't press charges. Meanwhile, Kale went to his room and was jump-scared by Ronnie, who was pretending to be dead in his closet. Obviously, this annoyed Kale after what he had just gone through. He caught him up to speed, then showed Kale what the camera had captured when he was in Robert's house. Kale noticed something. He zoomed in a few times on a certain frame and saw a dead body preserved behind an air vent. Meanwhile, Robert knocked out Kale's mom and then came to Kale's house, hitting Ronnie with a baseball bat. This led to a big fight between Robert and Kale. Kale tried to escape to get police attention, but Robert stopped him and knocked him out. Robert tied Kale up and started explaining his plan to frame Kale. Just as Robert was taking too long, Ashley called for him from downstairs, which distracted Robert enough for Kale to hit him. Kale then ran to Ashley, and together they fought Robert until Kale pushed him over the stair rail, making him fall to the bottom floor. They locked themselves in his bedroom, and then escaped through the window, jumping into Ashley's pool. Kale asked Ashley to call the police while he went to Robert's house to look for his mother. When he arrived, he discovered a secret room that looked like it was from a horror movie. He found items belonging to the woman, and realized that Robert had been pretending to be her to trick Kale. Meanwhile, Officer Gutierrez arrived at the party, but Robert quietly attacked him and broke his neck. In the basement, Kale navigated through a strange maze and finally found his mom tied up. He cut her free, but Robert grabbed her from behind, threw her against the wall and fought Kale. Robert pinned Kale against the wall, but just before he could kill him, Kale's mom stabbed him in the leg with a screwdriver. Taking advantage, Kale grabbed the head shears and stabbed Robert in the stomach. He then pushed Robert through a broken floor into a puddle of water, and dead bodies. They left the house relieved to be alive. The next day, Detective Parker arrived to remove Kale's ankle bracelet for his good behavior. Kale immediately crossed into Ashley's yard and gave her a big kiss. They went upstairs and got revenge on those kids across the street by prank calling their parents and pretending to be the cable company, accusing them of watching inappropriate content. They smiled, laughed, and kissed, feeling like they had won 
and the movie ends here.